Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Everyday citizens, of course, are being asked to be welcoming when it comes to the Syrian refugee crisis, inviting them here into our country. Well, you've seen terrorist attacks in the West has really ramped up anti-refugee sentiment on social media. Our next guest is doing a study about that. I am joined by Nadia Nafi. She is a PhD candidate with Concordia University. Welcome to the show. It's great Thank to you. have Thank you here. You Thank Approximately, you for me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Approximately how many refugees have we welcomed into Canada so, so since far? November 2015, we have around 30,200 and something. And, and are we doing enough as a country to welcome those refugees? With, um, you know, like with ev all the preparations that we're having and all the resistance and all the fear that we're expressing here, I think that we're on the, the right track. We can't do more because people will be scared of, you know, like especially about the screening. And right. uh, so we need to take things easier and make sure that the integration and the inclusion are happening properly. What is our, what's our attitude? towards the refugees that come into this country? So the thing is that as Canadians, we're right, we're welcoming and we want to help. This is our goal to unite. This is our like our idea, identity. Yeah. We're humanitarian and we and even, you know, like when you talk about immigrants and bringing refugees here, we want them to be productive citizens in our country, etc. So but the thing is that after uh, Paris attacks, uh, there are where some there was some shift in social media where people instead of you know like focusing on the refugees and their stories and how you know like all the atrocities they are living and they are actually human beings and victims right the focus is more became more on the refugees as terrorists so they they became labeled as terrorists and then after Collins attack they became labeled as rapists and this is something that even though refugees were not involved in the the Colon, uh, incidents, right, right. and, uh, and uh, uh, rapes, but the label stuck with them. Right. So we had this shift as I feel like after these attacks and Brussels attack, where the refugees now became more labeled about you know, like as terrorists and rapists instead of being victims and then, of and this you, war. You've reached out to young people exactly. to talk to them about this in your study. <clears throat> what have you heard from those young people? How are they being affected by what's happening and what's being said on social media? So uh, youth, well, I'm interviewed. I interviewed youth from Canada, from Europe, and from even the Middle East, and mm -hmm. they were shocked by how. Um, how social media was, you know, like all these different interactions happening against uh, the refugees instead of welcoming them. And they said that, you know, like people who were against in the, the against camp were more vocal than people who were with people, people who were with the settlement, with helping the refugees, were actually working on the floor, you know, like on, in the field of instead of expressing themselves on social media, whereas the others were using social media to express their fears, their worries, their, you know, like, why to risk uh, our future, why to risk our families, why to risk anything, uh, and bring uh, any terrorist maybe within this group. So, right. um, and they were saying that if youth never had any contact with a Syrian refugee before, or the contact doesn't have to be a direct contact, it could right. be an indirect contact. So you okay. know someone who has an, a good, if, positive experience with a Syrian refugee or a Muslim, right? Because the thing is, it started with refugees, then it went to immigrants and Islam in general. So if they had any sort of contact, then fear is lessened. So you don't really have, you don't worry, but if there's no contact with any Syrian refugee or someone coming from the Middle East, then people are scared. And social media is building a wall between Syrian refugees and our youth. Right. So if and what worries me and why I'm doing this research is that, you know, like if social media managed to like, if youth interpret social media as, you know, like and interpret all this fear and as if this is something that is true, that is happening, then youth may not even try to get in contact with senior refugees. Right. And there'll be a greater divide overall. Exactly. Nadia, can't thank you enough for coming in today. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having it's me. It's an important subject to talk about and thanks for helping raise awareness. We'll thank be you. back with more BT right after this.